I was recently at the MWC event in Barcelona where Xiaomi released their flagship 14 range of smartphones. I've actually already reviewed the Xiaomi 14 cameras, but how do they compare to those on the iPhone 15 Pro? look pretty similar, with the Xiaomi being a little bit bigger. It's just a little bit longer. The iPhone 15 Pro has the titanium body, while the Xiaomi 14 is a kind of more traditional metal and black plastic combo. But I do think that it's a, you know, a nice looking phone. And if you get the black version, it comes with a matte back, which is, you know, good for hiding fingerprints. And I just prefer the look of it, to be honest. The Xiaomi cameras are co-engineered with Leica and are housed in this rounded boxing. On the other hand, each camera in the rear of the iPhone is distinct in a look that's kind of almost iconic now. The Xiaomi screen measures 1200 by 2670 pixels resolution compared to the iPhone's slightly smaller 1179 by 2556 pixels and Ultimately, both devices have a pretty sharp 460 pixels per inch. Both the Xiaomi and the iPhone are driven by powerful chipsets. The iPhone 15 Pro has the A17 Pro system, while the Xiaomi 14 boasts the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And of course, the iPhone comes with a good old iOS, but the Xiaomi now uses the new HyperOS. Xiaomi calls HyperOS a human times car times home smart ecosystem, a system with humans at the center. So that's the kind of sales pitch. And it gives us a bit of a clue of what the OS is about, but it doesn't actually explain it that much. But anyway, more on that later. Both devices have a very similar array of cameras. There's an ultra wide, a main wide, and there's a three times telephoto although the Xiaomi is actually a 3.2 times telephoto. At least that's what it says in the camera app. And there's also a high quality selfie camera in both phones. And as well, both phones can shoot 4K video with all cameras up to 60 frames per second. So the Xiaomi rear cameras are all 50 megapixels. And as well, the Xiaomi uses the main camera for white balance, which is supposed to improve the consistency of the color balance across all three cameras. And you've got a front camera here, which is 32 megapixels. And when it comes to the iPhone 15 Pro cameras, we've got a 48 megapixel main wide camera and all the rest are 12 megapixels. But you know, don't assume that more pixels makes a better sensor. For a start, if you have more pixels, they need to be smaller to fit on the same size sensor. And smaller pixels perform worse in low light. So this might mean the secondary Xiaomi cameras perform worse in low light, particularly when shooting video. Again, Xiaomi has modeled their camera UI uh, pretty much on the iPhone UI. If you long press on the camera buttons, you bring up the zoom wheel, complete with the focal length, and it looks pretty identical on both cameras. In photo mode, the Xiaomi will zoom up to 60 times, but the iPhone limits you to 15 times. So in video mode, the iPhone can zoom digitally up to nine times, and the Xiaomi is pretty similar, 9.6 times, nothing much in it. So a little bit of a mic test here. Last shot was the Xiaomi 14 selfie camera plus the inbuilt mics. Now I'm using the iPhone selfie camera inbuilt mics and I'm also using the cinematic mode to give a little bit of blurry background which you can't actually do with the Xiaomi 14. Now with the Xiaomi I do like being able to swipe the screen to bring up all the main settings for the camera. With the iPhone a lot of the important settings need to be accessed by leaving the camera app and then hunting through your iPhone settings. With the Xiaomi even the lesser used settings can be accessed easily you just swipe and then tap the cog. So it's a little bit more user friendly, I'd say. And if you want to use your phone for vlogging, you might find the inbuilt teleprompter in the Xiaomi useful. 
The iPhone rear cameras generally have a warmer tone to them, while their Xiaomi is a little bit more bluish, I find. Both of these devices have really good selfie cameras. However, the iPhone selfie camera does seem to have a much superior dynamic range, particularly in video mode. With the light behind me, the iPhone copes, whereas the Xiaomi background is pretty much half blown out. Like all their devices, and pretty much all Androids these days, the Xiaomi 14 has a Pro mode, and that's going to give you manual control over things like shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and that kind of stuff. And you can also shoot raw photos and log video. In Xiaomi Pro mode, you can add a preview LUT, and you can even import third-party LUTs. Meanwhile, the iPhone 15 Pro still has no native manual control. Although you can shoot RAW and Apple Log, which being industry standard Aces Log, it does have the edge over Xiaomi's Log. If you do want to get manual control on your iPhone, you can download the free Blackmagic app for video. And this app is also going to allow you to import LUTs. But you're going to need another app for photos though, so perhaps something like Lightroom. Now, we probably all know that the iPhone has cinematic mode, which has been there since the iPhone 13. The Xiaomi 14 now comes with its own version of cinematic mode, which they call movie mode. While movie mode works well, it doesn't match the iPhone cinematic mode. For example, frame rate and resolution are fixed to 24 frames per second and 1080p. As well, you can't edit the F number later as you can with the cinematic mode. And this means that you can't program in focus pulls, for example. But those limits aside, they do work pretty similarly. Both the iPhone 15 Pro and the Xiaomi 14 can shoot 10-bit Dolby Vision video. Now, the Xiaomi allows you to switch between two Leica color profiles. In photo mode, just tap the Leica icon top left. In video mode, you can add different filters using the magic wand icon. The iPhone also has different color profiles. In photo mode, swipe left, tap the filter button in the menu, and then swipe up and down to choose the color. So this is a photo mode only in the iPhone, and there's no filter options for video. Although you can add preset filters later in the Photos app. did my review of the Xiaomi 14, I was told off a bit in the comments for saying that it was a mid-range device. Certainly, in Western markets, the device does go for similar prices to other, uh, not quite top range, but just below the top range phones. But actually, the Chinese version of this phone is closer to our mid-range. And the cost of the phone does vary a bit depending on the storage and the RAM size, so let's compare. My Xiaomi 14 has 512GB storage plus 12GB of physical RAM. In the UK, this currently costs £899. My iPhone has only 256GB storage. But if I went for the comparable 512GB storage, the iPhone is going to cost £1299. So in fact, the iPhone 15 Pro is £400 more which is, you know, almost 50% more expensive than the Xiaomi. And I'm not trying to sell you a Xiaomi, but we do need to make sure we're making as direct a comparison as we can, don't we? So, Hyper OS is here, but what is it? Basically, it's a collective term that includes Xiaomi's various operating systems across its entire ecosystem. This ranges from smartphones to smart home products. As such, Hyper OS comes pre-installed on some of its latest devices, and that includes the Xiaomi 14 series. And Xiaomi wants to connect these devices with the HyperConnect framework, which it says is integrated across all its devices. Now, do you enjoy making your photos and your videos look like they've been shot on film? If so, you might be interested 
in my recently updated Exploring the Film Look book, which you can now buy in the store on my Patreon page, um, or you can just get it as a member. So if you're a Video Creator Pro member on Patreon, you get that book and all the other books included, all the lessons, all the courses, and all the other extra content that I've got there, which is building up. I'm adding things, you know, every maybe couple of weeks or so. So maybe I'll see you there.